What a glorious sight this is. It's March 2024. Tesla stock, currently $175.34 a share. Market cap now under $550 billion within spitting distance of its 52-week low of just over 150 bucks. Nowhere near the 52-week high of almost 300. And I continue to buy with every spare cent. Watching investors capitulate one after another. Oh man, it brings me a strange amount of joy. That's not because I'm a total hat. It's just that I know people are going to learn a valuable lesson one way or another. As I posted on X yesterday, fear is a real wealth killer. Now look, there are some exceptions here. If your brain is four or five times the size of mine, which isn't really saying much, I'm sure that you can trade in and out of Tesla stock and make trillions of dollars. I ain't that smart. And I know I ain't that smart, so I just continue to buy with a long-term view. See you guys in 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years. Just scrolling below the Tesla stock price, I've seen some tailored search results here, including fund manager substantially reduces Tesla holding. Citing to, now, I'm going to go on a, out on a limb here and guess. It's a pretty good chance. This is Gary Black. Why? The guy knows how to use the media to promote his fund. I might be a bit embarrassed if it turns out that it's not Gary, but I mean... The fact that the title of this article is literally Fund Manager, it just feels like a Gary Black PR piece. And well, they want my details and an account, but even though I said earlier my brain's not particularly large, it's at least slightly above the threshold for thinking this is the end of the road. Remove paywall.com to the rescue. So why did this fund manager, whose identity is soon to be revealed, reduce Tesla holding and cite two reasons that undermine his positive view? Oh, there's a tag. Look, it is. Future Fund. Call it. How do I know? Gary's a master at playing the media game. Credit to him. Tesla shares have seen significant weakness in recent sessions, with the near term particularly worrying investors. Yes, the near term indeed. <laughs> worrying some investors. A bullish fund manager on Friday confirmed that he, I think there's a typo there, I'll just read it verbatim, that he, the firm he runs, has significantly trimmed its stake in the electric vehicle maker. What happened? Gary Black Run Future Fund's flagship fund, the Future Fund Active ETF, now holds 1,916 shares of Tesla valued at about 342000 bucks. Tesla accounted for 2.93% of the fund's portfolio weighting, a significant reduction from the 5.07% weighting the stock held on Monday. So I think I know what Gary's doing here. My best guess is this is a short-term trade. He pulled off a brilliant one a couple of years back, so credit where it's due. Like I said, my brain's not big enough to try stuff like this. I'll just continue buying here. Like I said, Tesla's market cap now under $550 billion. I personally think with a long-term view, that's the best risk-adjusted opportunity by far that I'm personally aware of in the public markets. And again, doesn't mean there's not better opportunities. I just don't know about them. From being the fourth largest holding in Future Fund, the stock has dropped to 15th place currently. One of Black's followers on X asked him as to why he reduced his stake after his meeting with the Tesla management. The fund manager said earlier this week that he met with Tesla IR in Austin on Tuesday. He also said the consensus deliveries number for the fourth quarter was too high. Fourth quarter? Uh, I think they mean first quarter. Wow, this, is this an AI written article? Um, what? Black reiterated the same on Friday. Tesla Q1 Wall Street delivery estimates remain too high. Yeah, exactly. Our estimates 425,000 versus Wall Street at 474. We expect Tesla Q1 and 2024 deliveries and APS estimates to fall further over the next two weeks, he said, given high inventories. He said... He sees a moderate risk of additional Tesla price cuts. Why well, it's important? Is it important? I'm going to skip that. If Black's comments are anything to go by, the stock could see additional selling between now and the first quarter of deliveries release in early April. Now, he's right. He certainly could. The only catalyst that could override the Tesla specific sentiment in the interim is the Fed's rate decision due on March 20th. Tes Tesla's problems are mostly self-inflicted, the article says, with even bullish analysts expressing disappointment over a lack of proper communication <laughs> from management. Investing in advertising explaining the merits of an EV versus ICE vehicles, as well as quelling common concerns about EVs could go a long way to re-accelerate EV adoption, with Tesla likely to be the biggest beneficiary analysts, including Black, say. Okay, I wish Gary luck with his short-term trade. I, I do understand his reasoning there. He's, he's probably on point, but again, my brain's nowhere near big enough to be trying that. Hope it works out. Meanwhile, from a FUD tsunami yesterday to this, Tesla is putting pressure on the competition, as opposed to the competition is coming, and Tesla's under pressure. It's time for our cash tag segment. For that, let's bring in Landon Swan. He's a co-founder at Likefolio. Welcome back to the show, Landon. Thank you. Good to be here. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. Uh, not a happy Friday for Tesla investors. Not a happy 2024 for Tesla investors. Uh, as we've seen, uh, you know, maybe just some 
weak headline news. Uh, Kevin and I have been talking about this all week. We haven't seen anything positive on Apple or Tesla over the last several weeks, and the stock's been uh, taking a hit here, down 29%. Do you have any data that says, hey, maybe this is an opportunity? You know, I tell you what, uh, we do. I mean, we, we've actually issued a bullish alert to our hedge fund clients. Uh, so just wanted to take a moment here. Apparently this episode is going to be gold, chalk, and cheese. Not actually. We've just heard Gary has close to halved his Tesla stock position, expecting estimates for Q4, according to the article, but actually Q1 deliveries to come down and EPS estimates to come down too. They are likely to do so. Meanwhile, the guest here is has put out an alert. Like, hello, guys. This is... Like, hello, uh, buy alert, buy alert. I think that's what he said, buying alert. So quite a contrast in strategies and or opinions about Tesla. I think it was three weeks ago, two weeks ago, something like that uh, at the end of February. So we've got a lot of, uh, it's not incredibly strong data, but it's it's contrary to the stock's performance, basically. We see a divergence opportunity uh, with the stock falling uh, and, and most of the data that we have being fairly strong. Now, keep in mind, you know, in their last report, they dropped 12% because of increased costs and sort of vague guidance. And, you know, I think there's a, been a bit of a shift with EVs. Uh, the demand is, has gotten a lot softer. Uh, hybrids have been doing very well. Uh, they've got some momentum going. And, of course, headlines like, you know, Hertz dumping their EV fleet, uh, that kind of thing. That That's obviously going to... Uh, uh, cause problems for investors in Tesla. However, uh, when we look at a lot of the data, I mean, it's pretty strong. The only model that isn't doing fan fantastic on a year-over-year -year basis is, is the Model Y, which has been their strongest performer. So it's got a high bar. Uh, the truck is, you know, obviously way out there because everyone's anticipating it. Now, this is a fascinating data point, isn't it? Must be all the ads that Tesla's running for the Cybertruck that's caused a surge in men mentions, right? The Super Bowl commercials they ran and the... Oh, wait, they didn't. Oh, I know what it is. It's all the deliveries of these things and the celebrities, athletes, rappers taking delivery and finding excuses to pick up coffee on Saturday morning in their Cybertruck just to be seen. Have dinner in their Cybertruck just to be seen. Posting pictures of their Cybertruck next to their private jet on Instagram just to be seen. Now, this really is worth emphasizing here. A Cybertruck is a rolling billboard. It's driving a lot of interest, not just in Cybertruck, but also to Tesla's, Tesla's other products. I can't even talk, I'm so excited. Look, of all Tesla's vehicles, the only that hasn't seen an increase on the 90-day moving average in terms of mentions year over year is Tesla's Model Y, which, by the way, is currently the world's best-selling vehicle. I'm just putting that out there. I think it'll be fine. But look, it's almost like a trickle-down effect. I don't know, maybe some random person, you see Kim Kardashian flexing her Cybertruck, and what the fuck is that? That's, oh, that's a Tesla thing. That, that's shit. Let me check out what else they make. Next minute, you're looking at a Model X. Why? It's got plenty of size. Doesn't look so weird. An increase in interest for Model S, and, of course, 3. Keeping in mind, the 3 has recently had a refresh. So, it's really important. Year over year, obviously, a huge surge in mentions for Cybertruck. Naturally, why? It's just coming out. But look, Model X... Apparently an ancient, stale product, according to the experts. Model S, also ancient and stale, according to the so-called experts. And even Model 3, also ancient and stale, according to the experts. All seeing year-over-year -year increases in mentions. I wonder what happens when interest rates start to come back down and more people can afford to and or just feel comfortable to purchase a vehicle and or finance a vehicle. I'm sure it's nothing. Uh, I think there's been a couple, you know, a few deliveries. I haven't seen one in the wild yet. Uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing the first one. Uh, but, you know, you can see here that most of their vehicles are doing well. The Y is a concern because it is one of the, their best performers and uh, the bar is high there. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens once the, the truck starts getting delivered. And I will say they've, they've been putting a lot of pressure on their competition. I mean, when you look at uh, the price drops that they've pulled off, Ford has had to kind of match. They dropped their, their Mustang Mach-E down to uh, 48000 They dropped it 8000 but still high. Wait, wait, wait. Is he suggesting that Tesla does not, in fact, exist in a bubble, not in a vacuum? That what they do around pricing and the value proposition of their products, features, functionality, overall value, and the price impacts other companies who also want to sell vehicles in the same marketplace known as Earth? Is that, is that what he's saying? I think that might be what he's saying. What an awful idea. I wish I'd thought of that. Higher than the Model Y, which also qualifies for the tax credit, and the, and the, the Mustang does not. So, uh, you know, they've, you know, they're creating a lot of problems for their competition. Uh, but you look at just how they're doing compared to some of the, the competition. Yo, look at that! Year-over-year -year change in visits, assuming their official websites. Nice day moving average. Tesla, Ford, and GM. Nineteen percent 
19% increase in visits to Tesla's website year over year. Ford going the wrong way, down 6%. And GM, who led in matter, down 17%. That's actually pretty alarming for GM. I mean, seeing any decline at all is alarming, but God, 17%. I'm sure everything's going to be fine after all. GM CEO Mary Barra was recently inducted into the Automotive Hall of Fame. Wait, why was she inducted again? Uh, oh, that's right. Her accomplishments include having a vagina. By the way, actually, if you guys want to look into her accomplishments. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not kidding. And you can see Tesla's increasing web visits, um, Ford and GM, not so much. So um, it, you know, we've got good data on them. Everything is, is fairly strong. The, min the mentions themselves are up about 5% on a year over year basis, while the stock is just you know, getting crushed. So um, you know, I like Tesla long term based on the data. You know, I like the company personally, but I don't let that get in my way. I read the data and the data looks pretty good with the sell off that does warrant, in my opinion, buying a, of a dip here uh, and, and you know, heading bullish into the rest of this year. Landon, what if I told you that I'm bullish on Tesla and it has nothing to do with EVs. You look at the portfolio of businesses that this company has and the other things in the pipeline. Bro, I am impressed. I know where he's going with this and this is in the finance media and he, apparently he's about to explain why Tesla is not just the car company. I can't believe what's happening. I've jokingly, but not actually jokingly said in the past that Tesla is in and of itself, essentially a gigantic ETF. We get exposure to a ton of different high growth businesses get a slice of ai energy storage electric vehicles insurance future autonomy i could keep going on you guys get the point right man this is an impressive segment thus far <laughs> just, oh, man, I, I, i'm just laughing at about the people who are selling now <laughs> i'm gonna mute myself otherwise i'll just be laughing over the entire clip that this company has and there's a whole new reason a whole new book you can write on why you're bullish tesla like i'll read them how about the mega pack that they think by mid 2030s early 20 or like around 2040 is going to be make more money than, than the cars how about the power wall three different kinds of power walls four different kinds of charging stations robotics robo taxi gigafactories all these other things besides evs that could be game changing for a company and I, I i my idea or my idea my theory on the evs is elon musk is playing a long game to put so much pressure on these other companies that he's going to be the only one left one le left standing and then there's the this is just so amazing he's nailing it and by the way the only one left standing bro just spat some facts let me just translate if tesla is the only one left standing so to speak that means that Companies, including a lot of EV startups, and importantly, legacy automotive manufacturers attempting, in vain, to transition to electric vehicles, are completely and utterly fucked and going bankrupt. I mean, that is what he said, if you read between the lines, if Tesla's the only one left standing, as in, only one still operating, aka solvent, rip. By the way, I totally agree. It's just amazing to hear this said out loud. Have we entered an alternative universe here, like a parallel dimension or something? China problem with them making too many cars and they're going to dump them on the rest of the world. So that's a longer play. But all these other parts of their business, the pipeline, it, it is, they, they've got four or five really good businesses within Tesla. If you, if you eliminate the cars, Landon. I, I agree. I think cars only is a buy on Tesla. I think when you add in everything else that you just talked about, especially, you know, the robotics, I think and it's a longer term play, but that one really gets me excited five to 10 years from now. I mean, they could be the, the world leader in that. It could be, you know, the cars could be a footnote as to what this company does. Uh, so Bro, this may, in fact, it's definitely in the top three, but this may, in fact, be my favorite ever segment discussing Tesla. Holy shit. I agree. Again, what have I said about <laughs> humanoid robots? likely to make the rest of Tesla's business look like a rounding error. I think he said essentially the same thing. Now, doesn't mean it's guaranteed, but I think about this in terms of probabilities and holy fuck, if these guys keep talking so much sense on Tesla, it might put me out of a job. So cars only, I'm bullish. Um, add in everything else, then then you're really, really talking. I'm very excited. And, you know, it's it's not like this uh, this CEO has a problem multitasking. I mean, he, <laughs> he can do he can do a lot of different things at once. Uh, so I'm not worried about that. 
Um, and, you know, just you, you can see it in the chart here. I mean, the blue lines, people talking about this company and its products, uh, the, the grayer, the light, the lighter line is the stock price. I mean, you, you shouldn't have them moving away this much without an opportunity. So this is an opportunity uh, in the short term and then long term, all the things you talked about. So, I mean, this is one that I think you can, you know, buy the shares and stuff them into your mattress and check back in five or 10 years. And I think you'll be really pleased. Now, I, I think he's probably got a point. Call me crazy. But for what it's worth, I have no plan to be selling any of my Tesla stock anytime this decade or next. In fact, never going with the whole buy, borrow, die strategy. But that's a topic for another video. But I do really think he has quite the point, though. Anyone want to set a reminder so we can check back in five and ten years and see what's happened again? Just for context, Tesla's market cap today, just under $550 billion. And certain fund managers recently selling their position. Not all of it, but a decent slice. Um... You've got some uh, data on the Cybertruck. Uh, you know, of course, that's probably getting a lot of uh, talk there. But is this about maybe their uh, their lineup of cars getting a little bit of stale? Now, the Cybertruck, it's new, right? But it's gonna so he just yeah, <laughs> he just said stale. Oh fuck me! We just saw the data, right? I mean, we saw the data. This isn't perfect, but it's a great proxy for interest in products. Year over year, we're seeing an increase in mentions. For Model X, up 23%. Model S, 17 Model 3, 15%. And the only vehicle that saw a year-over-year decline in mentions is currently the world's best-selling vehicle and continuing to sell more units quarter after quarter after quarter. It's going to be an outlier as far as sales. Do they need to come up with a new model here? Because it seems like everybody else is, is doing that, especially over in China where they've gotten competition from... Ah, uh, the old everyone else is doing it, so I should do it too. By the way, in totally unrelated matters, uh, it's for your protection, not the quarterly profits. <laughs> what? Wait, I don't even know what that means. From BYD and others, but now, uh, yesterday, Rivian announced um, that they're coming out with their R2, and they actually just uh, announced, the CEO just announced that they have over 68,000 reservations for that in under 24 hours. So is competition part of the part of the problem too, along with the hybrid story? Yeah, I mean, obviously, a, a world without competition is better, but it, it doesn't seem to phase Tesla because uh, they seem to always have the best product, and there's always hype for the next best thing out there. Uh, but then when the car is actually realized, when it's delivered, you start comparing it, and, and what we've seen is that Tesla holds up where others are maybe, you know, the, the hype you know, it outpaces the reality. So, um, yes, obviously, you know, Rivian, I think they've got, you know, they've got a lot of potential. They're also talking about that R3, R3X right. that they're going to deliver in 2026. Um, and of course, that's going to compete directly with the Cybertruck. Uh, but Tesla has shown its ability to dominate the competition. I mean, this is, it's not just like they have the best car. Now they have the best car at a really, really reasonable price. I mean, the, the numbers that they've got coming out for these cars are just unbelievable. I mean, you can rewind and think about the the Roadster when it first came out at like 120, I think, 120,000. And that seemed reasonable because of the zero to 60 numbers it was putting up and the luxury that it had. And now you've got cars that are as good or better and they're, you know, they're 40, 50,000, some of them are in the 30s. Uh, so Tesla is, is showing their ability uh, to not only deliver a great product, but also do it at numbers that competition just can't touch. So I think long term, yeah, there's going to be some competition, but they have such a lead and they're and they're expanding so quickly. It's going to be very difficult for competition to catch up with them anytime soon. So he used the word dominating. And obviously, I'm in total agreement there. Also, I think what he was just saying there is that Tesla has what I would describe as an unassailable lead. They've already won the decade. I think that's what he was suggesting there. <laughs> Funnily enough, I happen to agree. As for Tesla's so-called competition... They certainly have disappointed when they've actually delivered. And again, I want to wish Rivian all the best. I hope they are successful. I think their most likely scenario at this juncture is shopping around for an acquisition. Not to make one, but to be one. Just remember, Tesla made the almost impossible look reasonable. And when Tesla did it, they weren't competing with a company like Tesla. For others to do what Tesla did, it's even more challenging. But good thing production's easy and profitability when producing electric vehicles is even easier than just producing them at scale unprofitably. So I'm sure everything's going to be fine. Uh, yep, great breakdown. And I'm guessing you guys have data, even though stocks pulled back, you guys are, uh, you know, have an earnings score that would be elevated at this point. 
Yeah, so when it's you know when we're not directly in earnings, when we look at more of a long-term play, uh, because of the pullback and all the data that we've got, we're actually at a plus 80 on this one long-term. It's not a you know it's, we're talking about like a year outlook, that kind of thing, not a, a few weeks. So that's why I'm I'm pretty bullish on it. Uh, again, a lot of it has to do with the stock's performance. If we were up 250, 300, I'd be saying this is you know valued pretty fairly. But right now, it seems like a big opportunity. All right, great stuff, great data. As always, land and have uh, appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Thanks, guys. You too. Bro, I really want to see more of this guy and the co-host spitting some facts. It's a nice change of scenery, isn't it? So let me know in the comments below who's buying, who's selling, who's crying, who's buying and crying, who's selling and crying, and who's just hodling. Like I said yesterday, I'll be launching my new OnlyFans to raise capital for further investment in Tesla stock <laughs> very soon. See ya. Want more content? Early access? bunch of perks click the links in the pinned comment ag1 has given me a massive meaningful boost in energy allowing me to do a lot more every day including using my brain more and using my body more i highly recommend you guys and girls check it out it's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps it's got 75 high quality vitamins minerals and whole food source nutrients plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress plus if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com smr you can get yourself a one-year free supply of vitamin d3 and k2 but don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. I ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. Uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy, wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, 
This is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, snake oil salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But constantly, I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro. When I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. You get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month and if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, or click the link in the pinned comment, and please, let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the link in the pinned comment, see you over on Twitter and or Patreon, and don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.